Um, <laughs> Elmwood Neighborhood Association. Um, so, really happy to be here. Um, sad to see that Seth is, um, has resigned. He has uh, given our city so much. Um, and um, I look forward to uh, witnessing this race. I wish I could vote, but I can't because I'm outside of the ward. Um, I would like to hear each one of you shortly um, talk about your views on sea level rise and climate change. Okay, here's the rule. Three minutes. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short. <laughs> so, my policy platform is out there. I didn't need anyone on this stage to help me inform my policy. I was very <clears throat> adamant about putting it out there and being very clear about what it is that I believed in and my values. Uh, first off, environmental justice is a huge part of my platform. I think we need to expand and promote investment in renewable energy and uh, recognize our role in fighting against the climate crisis that, that exists here in Providence. And we have to do it in a very, again, nuanced way where we're creating positive economic growth for the city of Providence. How do we put people back to work, but how, how do we also ensure that we're raising a more sustainable future uh, in our city? Then we have to fight to ensure that every Ward 1 resident has access to healthy food options and clean air and clean water. And we've got to continue to advocate for sustainable green spaces. That's the Friends of India Point Park. That's our community gardens. That's uh, uh, a lot of uh, the green space in our neighborhood. And then finally, we have to lift the voices and protect communities who are most at risk for environmental uh, exploitation and, quite frankly, environmental racism. We see it at the Port of Providence. I see Doug here. I see Linda here. I'm the only candidate on this stage who has worked tooth and nail with these two to ensure that we can overturn some of the bad practices that we see around the Port of Providence. I put together a letter in conjunction with Doug and with uh, uh, Linda, and we have uh, coalesced some of the neighborhood associations to jump on board with saying, you know what, enough is enough around our Port of Providence, because that doesn't just have implications on the Port of Providence and our children, who, by the way, are heavily, heavily affected by the asthma rates in that area. Thanks, John. And that's, and that's problematic. And we've got to continue to fight with each other and make this a lot more broader than what's happening just on the east side, where the air is cleaner and the water is cleaner. And again, I, I think I've taken a definitive stance on that, and that's where my values are. Yeah. So uh, Narragansett Bay is uh, set to be disproportionately affected by seawater rise uh, and climate change. And um, for starters, uh, <clears throat> future development should uh, should follow that 500-year plan. There's, there's a project on Gaina that's that this is part of that conversation about. Um, more broadly, though, um, the east side on a hill is probably going to be okay, but uh, downtown uh, certainly um, cannot be underwater. And so it's actually, there is, a, I believe, studies done by the Providence Foundation that shows that that's, that's in store for us unless we do uh, a few preventative things now. And those, those two things would be to, to fund the dredging of the river and keep it so that, uh, to a yeah, keep it silted and silted or desilted. And two is we have to look at um, what we want to do for seawater, uh, sea walls rather. So those are only two ways um, we can uh, protect downtown um, from rising levels. You don't want to get rid of, uh, I don't think you want to get rid of the marinas or find some, uh, make, the, make the hurricane barrier a permanent installation. But um, yeah, got to make sure that there's enough uh, enough places for the uh, for stormwater to go and for uh, uh, sink to whatever uh, whatever seawalls might be necessary. Thanks, Nick. Or just move all these skyscrapers to higher ground. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Anthony. 
So uh, this is an area that I'm not especially well versed on, but I have people that are. My friend Linda back there also is the person that introduced me to these types of concerns in our neighborhoods and our wards and our city. And it was because of the Neighborhood Coalition. That is where you find the people who know most about things you don't know, which is why listening and being available and having access to them and to your city council person is so vital. It's not possible I'm going to have all the answers right now, but I can go to the people who definitely have them, the people who have the knowledge, the passion, the experience and expertise to make me understand. I went to Ward 10's uh, recent um, uh, meeting by a uh, newly elected council person, uh, uh, Pedro Espinal. It was very eye-opening for me. Why did I go? Because my friend Linda called me and said, could you come? This is part of relationship building. This is part of unity. Where did this come from? It came from doing this with the Neighborhood Association that John and I, but also Nick and I have done this on other things with our Neighborhood Associations. So this is the way to get what you asked addressed by your city council person. Get that person to the people who know best, who understand best, and can inform them best to bring it back to everyone else who is probably not as informed as we think also. I think we should give Linda and Doug a yeah. round of applause. They have been doing great work on this issue. Tremendous work. I mean, that was a huge undertaking, and to your point, Anthony, I mean, we've been working to the nail to help uh, our, our Washington Park uh, and South Providence neighbors on this issue because they don't deserve a dump there. That's right. Okay. And, and our, t our, our kids don't deserve some of the environmental uh, injustices that they're